Hey everyone, I hope you've been well. This week, I'm bringing you a tutorial on how to import dialogue from a text file into Unity and display it in a dialogue box. Like last time, I'll be using some features from Odin Inspector to improve my development pipeline. By no means is this required, as you could use alternatives to accomplish the same task, but for simplicity's sake, I'll use Odin. Before we jump in, please comment, like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell to be notified when more content goes live. This project will be available for you to download on my GitHub linked below. I'm going to use these example text files. This one is from Waiting for Godot, and this one is from The Glass Menagerie. As you can see, they're both formatted the same, speaker, colon, space, dialogue, except for when there's narration. In this case, the speaker is just not listed. We can easily use this formatting to our advantage, so let's dive in. All right, so here I am in a fresh project and in a new scene. The first thing that we'll need is two scripts, dialogue and dialogue strip. Dialogue is easy. It's just data. So we'll just need a simple serializable struct with the speaker name and the dialogue being said. Both are strings. On to dialogue strip. Since we want to load our text into Unity in a format that we can work with and store it long term, a scriptable object is a great choice. Be sure to tag the class with the create asset menu attribute so we can create multiple of these really easily. The two bits of data needed here are a list of dialogues that we just created and a reference to the text asset that we want to use. So let's create a button by simply tagging our method with Odin's button attribute so that when pressed reads the text asset and converts it into a list of dialogues that we can work with. First, we need to clear the existing list. Since text asset dot text gives us one string that contains the full text, we can just split the string at every environment new line character and store that in an array of strings with no special string split options. Now we need to convert our array of strings into a list of dialogues. We can make use of link select for this. We need to give select a function that can convert each string into a dialogue. So let's just use the Lambda operator to do that and add the whole return value to the dialogue list. Let's go over that again. Select will transform one type into another type. So we give it a function to run on every line in our array of lines that tells it how to convert to a dialogue. The Lambda operator allows us to construct that function in line and pass it directly into select. For that function, we need to parse the string line to determine who is saying what or if it's narration. Regex match will do that for us. It takes any string and a string of what to match. Start our match string with an at symbol to mark the string as a literal. We know that the speaker and the dialogue are separated by a colon space. So let's use two sets of parentheses with a colon space in the middle of them to tell regex that these two are different groups. We want to read all characters for both of those groups. So we use a period asterisk in both sets of parentheses. Then we can simply name each group with a question mark less than some name greater than so we can access them easier next. Since we know that our text asset will always follow this format and the lines without the colon space are narration lines, we can assume that when the regex fails, the line is narration. In a more complex system, we might need to parse for something like a scene change here as well, but let's keep it simple for now. So returning the result of a simple ternary operator with the match success bool being the conditional will do. When true, we should return a new dialogue with the speaker and the dialogue values set as the value of their respective groups from the regex match. And remember, when false, we have narration. So simply setting the dialogue to the whole line will do with no speaker listed as it will default to an empty string. Now tab over into Unity right click on our project file and create some dialogue strips. Be sure to drag the proper text asset into the slot and press the reload script button. Now you should see all of your dialogue populate the list like so. When narration happens, the speaker is listed as empty. Now that we've read our data in and converted it into something we can easily work with, we simply need to read each entry in that list 
and write it out into a dialog box as UI. I'm going to make a super simple dialog box UI. To start, I like to contain all of my UI in a panel called Screen. Making this will have Unity auto-generate the canvas and the event system for us. Inside the screen, I'll make another panel called Dialog Box. I also disable the image component on the screen panel. We don't need it there, as it's just a container object. Resize the dialog box to something that fits your style. Don't forget to set your anchors to make it easier for yourself. For now, I'm just going to use the centered rectangle shape that is found at the bottom middle of the screen. Style it however you prefer. I'm just going to use some dark grays with a little bit of transparency. Next, we need the text for the speaker's name. I'm going to use TextMesh Pro simply because I like it more than the default text. You can use whichever you prefer. I anchor it to the top left corner of the dialog box with some padding and set it to span the full length of the box and use the auto size options in case a larger name is displayed. Let's create another panel anchored to the bottom to be the background of the dialog text that spans the full length of the box with some padding. I'll use a little bit of a lighter gray here. Finally, make another text to be set as the dialog text. Again, this spans the full length of the designated area with a little bit of padding. I use the auto size options here again, just in case a little bit of a longer dialog is displayed. Press play to be able to see what it looks like on the screen. Back to coding. Create a dialog box script and add it to the dialog box game object. Ignore that error if it shows up for you. That's just Unity being buggy. Create a dialog strip variable. This will be the current dialog strip that we are to display. When the game starts, we want to display the first line of dialog from the current dialog strip. So let's write a method called display dialog that takes in a dialog to display. Let's call it from start and pass in index zero of our dialog from the current dialog strip. Now we need to assign the text. Create two serialized variables, name text and dialog text. I'm using TextMesh Pro UGUI because of my choice to use TextMesh Pro earlier. Set the name text dot text to to display dot speaker and the dialog text dot text to the dialog. Once in Unity, drag in the name and dialog text game objects to the proper fields and drag one of our dialog strips to the current strip field. Press play and you'll see that it loads the dialog from the dialog strip and displays it. I used the dialog strip with narration so our speaker is blank. Now we need to advance the dialog to the next entry when the player provides input. I'm going to use the new Unity input system for this, as many people seem to struggle with using it. Importing the package from the package manager will restart your editor. Once imported, go to your event system object and click the replace with input system UI input module button. Create an input actions object in your project file, double click it to open it up. Add a new action map. I'm going to call mine keyboard slash mouse. Let's just rename the default action to next dialog as well. I'll add three bindings to this action, left click, right arrow, and space. Unity doesn't have contextual saving, so be sure you press that save asset button. Add a player input component to the dialog box game object and drag your input action asset into the actions field. Swap the behavior to invoke Unity events. Head back into our dialog box script. Let's create a next dialog method that takes combat context as a parameter. This will be passed in by Unity. Unity will call this method even when our binding keys are released. So let's just return early if the context is anything other than performed, as we only want to advance the dialog when the button is pressed. Add a private int to store the index that is currently being displayed. Default it to zero, and to stay consistent, we can use that in our start method as the index. Now we want to increment this by one when the player clicks, but not advance past the end of our dialog. So I'll use a simple ternary operator for that. For now, if we reach the end of the current dialog strip, we'll just return to the beginning by using a zero. Later on, we can advance to the next dialog strip. Finally, just pass the dialog at the current index into display dialog, just like we did in start. 
Save and swap back to Unity. Expand the events and keyboard slash mouse contextual menus on the player input component. Create a new event for the next dialog action. Drag the dialog box script into the object field and choose the next dialog method that we just wrote on the dropdown. Save and press play. Now pressing either of the binding keys will advance to the next dialog. And that's it. The foundation of a dialog system is complete. To expand on this, you could add individual character printing, dialog strip selection, or even flags to reveal new dialog options upon completion of a strip. Let me know in the comments below if you would like a tutorial focusing on either of these concepts. Special thanks to my patrons on Patreon. Your support really helps drive me to create videos like these. Thank you so much. If any of you would like to see your name on this list or as well as on my stream, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Stop by my live stream on Twitch Wednesday through Saturday, 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. Pacific. Join my Discord community and chat with other like-minded developers. Share your work, give feedback, and receive feedback. If you like my work, check out my assets available on the Unity Asset Store. You can play my games and my asset demos on my itch. And for all of you that made it to the end of this video, if you haven't yet, please comment, like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Thanks for watching.